So a couple things that happened prior to this were finished up the mounting bracket for the PSC steering pump. And I added some light weighting cuts to the lower control arms, as well as these Delrin sliders on the bottom of the lower control arm. You can get like three feet of travel because you have a really long drive shaft and really long trailing arms. And you can just droop that rear axle way out, which is almost three feet of wheel travel. The constraint for the rear wheel travel was again, those misalignment spacers plus or minus 30 degrees. Those RCV axles, as far as I can tell, they're rated for 45 degrees, but I don't know if that's a plus or minus 45 degrees or whether it's total 45 degree. It was also tempting to put rear steer on this design, and I still might do that because the front steering angle was only plus or minus 20. I also ended up moving the rear wheels out an extra two inches. So the front track width is eight and a half feet and the rear track width is nine feet. And so far in this design, I've only used chromoly parts in two places. And they're parts that need to be thin and need to be extra strong. And I ended up with kind of an innovative design. It's it's not something that I've seen before where there's a big clearance cut in the center of this part that captures the spherical bearing and leaves lots of room for the trailing arm to cycle and for the trailing arm to be extra thick. I've never seen anybody do a design like this, but the advantage is that it keeps all of the pivot points in line with each other. It keeps the assembly super light and all of your force loads go through the thick, strong parts. So now I'm working on the rear trailing arm, which is 72 inches pivot to pivot. And there's a really good video from the guys at Shock Therapy where they talk about anti-squat, anti-dive and instant center. You want the CG to be as far back as possible behind that pivot point so that when you drive forward, that drive force load is pushing the vehicle forward without the center of gravity being pushed down. The thing that I'm not sure what I'm going to do is where to put the rear sway bar mounts. So this was part of the design that I was really looking forward to because a billet trailing arm is just like a big piece of aluminum anodized candy for the whole design. The tricky part is making these shock mount pockets machinable with a ball end mill from the top in one operation without having to split the part in two and bolt it together. I want to do an eight into one equal length header that goes out through the rear spare tire right in the center of the vehicle. I think that's going to look crazy.